what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? Because you guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. Potent Mr. G rocks. You're rocking. It'll thrive. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It is September 8th. If things are going well right now, I'm on my way to Virginia to Blue Ridge Rock Fest, and hopefully I will see you there. We'll party it up. But before we get into today's podcast, I want to thank Phoenix Fitness for sponsoring this podcast. Yes, concerts, mosh pits. I love them. I can't stop going into mosh pits, but I want to make sure that I can go in as many as possible when I go to festivals that I can last the whole entire weekend. So I don't want to tap on it. I got to make sure my fitness is in check. I got to make sure that my cardio game is on its absolute peak and keep going even higher. Got to make sure that I'm whipped away to make sure that, you know, I'm strong and take care of some of this stuff. But in reality, how do I recover from all stuff? How to make sure that I'm prepared, recovering right, and make sure I'm rebuilding muscle? That's where Phoenix Fitness comes in with different supplements such as pre workouts, both stim and stim free, BCAA compounds to help you recover after workout, proteins for AM, PM, and after workout, creatines, multivitamins, whatever you might need is at fnxfit.com. Our listeners get 15, count it, 15% off using the code MSOTD at checkout. Link description of the podcast. So thank you, Phoenix Fitness. And now in our future presentation, thank you to Brian from MVK Music Group once again for helping connect us with this band so thank you brian as i go into my radio voice this band is called cold subject out of florida and how do i describe this band well they have so many different sounds so many different influences that you really have to take a listen to it and really understand just how much is going on here because you can't classify this band you can't put them in a box we talk about how they come up with that style they share a bunch of crazy stories and we go deep in their song polygonal and we go deep into its meaning and how all these different influences all these different sounds work so well together to create this full crazy song that takes so many different influences from so many different places but all works together as a cohesive unit so go check them out i'll have every single link description for you guys for this podcast for cold subject but don't you want to hear them first and hear my podcast are you guys ready let's go Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, again, a big shout out to Brian from MVK Music Group because he keeps us connected with so many great upcoming bands, a lot from the Florida area, but that's because where they're based, and sent me this one, and I was taking a look at their music, and if I try to describe it to you guys, th- this might be the hardest band i've ever had to describe their music to you guys because <laughs> it's i look it's all over the place it might have its base in metalcore at least that's what i think but there are so many different influences that get pulled in so many different directions <laughs> to the point where i've listened to the music and i'm like this is dynamic as all hell so let's talk about it. so please welcome the guys from the band cold subject so guys welcome oh! to Core progression podcast <laughs> what's up how's it going Guys, it is going a okay on my end today. How's everything going in your neck of the woods and you know going this well. time it's we're living in? Going. Really yeah, it's been really well. Just just going, just relaxing, just having a good time so far. Just absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah, much, we're in the process of uh, recording some new stuff, and it's you know we're we're kind of we're kind of like steady steady going it. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. Ooh, new stuff because I because I know you guys came out with an EP last year, and then you came out with a recent single called polygonal come out that came out i believe in 2021 so they're talking mm-hmm. about more music coming out jeez yes sir Eric, we're got a new ep that's gonna hopefully release somewhere in december i think we're going for we like it a lot better than the i'm thinking next stuff. year think next year i think it's gonna be really we don't have a but like <laughs> we don't we'll figure it out as we go <laughs> yeah in yeah, any case still... it's like amazing so mm-hmm. <laughs> All we know is it'll come out some point with by by like the end of the year or early next year. That's pretty much what I'm getting from this. Yeah, yeah. that's what someday, we're going for. Somehow. That's the plan. <laughs> but I think, but kind of a good way to go about it too is is if you guys don't have like this rigorous or complete set, like we have to have it out by this date then you're not rushing these songs. You're not putting them together in kind of more of a panic to the point where if you have an idea that you want to try on something, the point mm-hmm. where, okay, you're working on one of the songs, you're working on the chorus, but someone has an idea. It's like, hey, what if we made this tweak? What if we made this little change to see yeah, what would happen? Song. Now you have the ability to make that change. You have the time to work with it to see if it works out or not because if it works out, hell yeah, ride with it, roll with it. But if it doesn't work out, well, now you know and you don't mm-hmm. have to worry about it. Like, you don't have to play the what if game. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I like yeah. Because a huge part of it, too, is um, we mix everything in-house. Like, we record and track everything in-house ourselves. So that kind of gives us a whole lot of leeway as to, like, there's really no rush because we're basically just working on our own schedule. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, that's kind of what happened during a lot of the pandemic as well, because I'm seeing a lot more bands where it's like, okay, you know, bands that haven't come out with music in a while, it's like they're coming out with music again. Or some yeah. bands that came out with music, like even in 2020, like I know for Mash the New, they dropped an EP back here in August or the day we're recording this, they dropped an EP. Uh, Trivium mm-hmm. announced a brand new album about literally maybe a year and a half after their last one. It's like, mm-hmm. you got to be kidding me. But this is all just what happens when everyone is literally shut down for like a, like almost a year live shows weren't happening for almost a year and a half so what else are musicians supposed to do at that point it's what, what are you gonna do at that point you're, we got too much eight. time <laughs> you, you, have to, you have the time to create you have the time to work with some of the stuff you need time to really understand where you want to go with the band as musicians where you want to go yourselves as musicians but mm-hmm. it's just one thing i've been consistently seeing too is it seems like a lot of the bands are releasing stuff, especially like this post pandemic period, like t- post shutdown period, like 2021. It seems like there's so much more great music coming out than just like, Oh, it's you know, a Renaissance for sure. Good. Like, yep. Oh, absolutely. Cause we've all been stuck at home just writing. Yeah. It's, nothing better to do. And not only that, but it's just, you're really able to take the time to flesh out a lot of these different emotions and feelings that you want to put into some of these songs and really understand how it's going to work out with the instrumentals to the point where, already you know maybe this certain guitar tune is going to end up making it sound like you know if we're talking about something a little bit heavier like on a depression standpoint this little bit guitar tune is going to end up creating more of this like cry out for help feel but this one's going to create more of this like deep-seated real heavier stuck within yourself feel but you got to figure mm-hmm. out what emotion you're trying to go with and then how the guitars how the drums how the vocals are going to match up with that you have the time to really figure that out during this time so because i'm looking mm-hmm. at like my album of the year list right now my songs of the year list it's like the good and the bad. The bad is like maybe this big, but the good is like it's like this big. Right. It just keeps growing every single freaking week. Yeah. Yeah, I think like it's also like making do with not being able to play out. Like you gotta kind of get that creative outlet somehow. Like mm-hmm. as far as writing goes, I know that we started. We like we're because of the EP that we're recording now. We started writing, you know, a pro like a good while ago. Um, like we had been we had gotten some opportunities to play some shows, which is great, but um. You know, we're not playing every week, you know, like, you know, because I remember when Cold Subject first kind of started, we played pretty much weekly in some way. But mm-hmm. um, the show, yeah, when but COVID kind of put the kibosh on that pretty quick. And so, yeah, it's writing has just been kind of the thing to do in terms of music. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all, all that really realistically all there was to do for the longest time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's just somewhere we're now we're kind of reaping the benefits of that. But. I also mm-hmm. want to I also want to make sure that live music because now it's back, but there still seems to be problems with different things with COVID that it stays back due to the fact that for two couple reasons. One, the world needs live music to come back. It's a whole entire thing of just community, family, everyone back together, just enjoying shows and enjoying right. music for the purpose of we all want to be there because we just want to enjoy. It's something that we enjoy in life. And it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are. Just the fact that you're enjoying the band on stage and the person next to you could have a completely different background from you, but is enjoying that band on stage as well. It's a whole family vibe. Two, mm-hmm. you guys get back up on stage and you guys get to use that your creativity and have that creative outlet again on a live setting. And three, I got a shit ton of concerts I want to go to. I bought a lot of these tickets. I don't want to get them postponed again. <laughs> No, I know that. <laughs> I just went to see Corn last weekend, and like mm-hmm. that's on my bucket list. So I finally got that done. Yeah, a lot of the, like now the big shows are kind of coming back. It's it's such a relief because like, there's so many shows that I've been wanting to see, and so many like festivals that were announced in 2020, but have been yeah. continuously postponed. And now we're finally able to go see that stuff. It's so exciting. Yeah, it's like I took a look at like my lineup, my list. I'm like, okay, you know, my first big one was like I got to go to Rockfest in was uh, Kadat, Wisconsin in july so i was like okay i got like four full days this this was great but like when it comes to like a much bigger and larger kind of like show that's not a festival I'm like man i just keep going to see some of these smaller ones and then at the end of august it's just like oh shoot rise against in chicago mm-hmm. yep and then all of a sudden like summer fest rolls in through milwaukee it's like okay you know i guess he rise against again and then all of a sudden on the day beforehand they added this band called american band which i've had in the podcast then spirit box after them and then falling in reverse headlining the site. I'm like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. I'm all in there. (laughs) And then, and then the next week it's off to Virginia, off to Blue Ridge. Mm. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to go see, uh, I'm going to rebel rock this year. I know they're doing uh, Rockville, right? I'm going to uh, welcome to Rockville or something like that up in Tennessee. I think it's Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. I think it's on the Rockville's here. Yeah. Rockville's in Daytona. 
Louder oh, than la- life. Louder than life. life. Louder than life. It's in God. Uh, it's in Louisville. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so I'm driving up there. And then in the November, I'm gonna go see Ice Nine Kills over down in Destin, Florida, which will be exciting. Alrighty, you might be all right. I get to see Ice Nine Kills four times in the span of two weeks. Hell yeah. <laughs> because they're playing at they're playing at Blue Ridge, so I don't want to miss that. Then on right. Friday the 17th, they're gonna be in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And me and one of my, and my friends who lives in Green Bay, I'm gonna go meet her at the show because I'm just like, well, I'm not gonna miss out on this. They're playing in Madison, Wisconsin the 21st, and I'm like, ah, shit, I kind of want to go to that. But then the 24th a day, it's like the day after they're supposed to be at Louder Than Life, I think. They're playing a show in Joliet, Illinois. And the only reason I'm going to that one is because uh, it's the only one in the first leg of the tour that Escape the Fate is not playing. So they needed a different opener. And mm-hmm. the o- the overall opener, like the first opener now, is going to be a band called Avoid. And mm-hmm. I've had them on the podcast before. They're- Benny is one of the funniest guys I've ever talked to in my entire life. I'm like, I want to go see them play live because their music is incredible. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see Ice Nine Kills four times in the span of two weeks. I'm going to love every single minute of it. I love yeah. Ice Nine Kills. Like, I love their whole like theatrical kind of thing. Like, that, that, I love all that. I eat all that shit up. No, mm-hmm. ab- absolutely. It's just one It's one of those things where I've been seeing a lot of different things when it comes to different music, especially more of like the heavy music scene, a lot in metalcore, where I see people consistently complaining about how a lot of, the, a lot of bands like, oh, no, they're just sounding the same. They're just doing the same stuff. No one's doing anything unique. And then all of a sudden people look at Ice Nine Kills like, oh, it's too gimmicky. It's like, what more do you want? And yeah. I take a look at the music that Ice Nine Kills yeah, I'm like, oh, too, so let, like, let, let's let's see. Hip to be scared. Okay, it was a little bit slower than I was expecting, but all of a sudden they do the Huey Lewis and the News Bridge. I'm like, okay, this is that fucking incredible. Yeah, I love that. Into the heavy ass breakdown. I'm like, okay, this is what I was expecting. This is good. And then Assault and Batteries. I'm not gonna lie. The first time I heard that song, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, how? Like, what is this? I don't understand. Like, why the hell this song? It feels all over the place. Then I watched the music video for it and. That sealed the deal on that song. The music video is incredible. That's Ice Nine Kills. Yeah, Assault and Batteries. When did that come? I'm sorry, I haven't, I haven't seen that. What? I haven't heard that one. <laughs> it, You're the guy. <laughs> it came out on Monday, August 9th, because they're doing they're releasing a new single every single ninth, and they do their Nightmare on the Ninth stuff. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Okay, shoot. Go, not- go check <laughs> it out. Assault and Batteries. But you have to, you have to watch the music video with it because right. it's all based on uh, Child's Play with uh, Chucky. Oh, nice. oh, and the music yeah. uh, the music video just makes the whole entire uh, song it is incredible and then dan's guitar work especially in the bridge just right mm. <laughs> I, I thought they're gonna have a couple i thought they're gonna have trouble writing without jd there because i know some of the things that jd had done for the band it's like i was curious to see how that was gonna happen when it comes to guitar work no dan's got it covered they're good on that end <laughs> sweet that's how, okay so because I, I know they were doing the um the, they're they're on tour right now. When I was seeing them in Destin in November, they're they're on tour, and I didn't realize that they were doing like another album because I, I they had only released the Hip to Be Scared when I bought the tickets, and so like I just thought like like what are they gonna play? <laughs> yeah, there's, the new album comes out on October fifteenth, and it's it's uh, the Silver Scream two, so they're doing a sequel yeah. to what they originally did. Okay, and all it's right, like it's and again like all the horror movie stuff because like again that Assault and Batteries video just the whole entire Chucky part. Of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny, it's crazy, it's wacky as all hell, but it is perfect for the song, and it just makes the song, like, it. when I first heard the song again, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Then I watched the video, and it just made everything so much better. Right. <laughs> but enough about Ice Nine Kills. I want to talk about <laughs> Colts. Everyone want to talk about you guys. So, I always just start out podcasts normally after, you know, a little bit of conversation, but kind of get the flow going, but I'm going to ask all five of you guys, three questions the same three questions and i'm not gonna lie if you can't answer the first two there is something wrong with you but the third one that's where things get interesting and that's where i have all my fun with it so the first question is what is your name the second question is when it comes to cold subject what do you do in the band and the third one is i want to know a little fun wacky interesting fact or story about yourself your time band whatever it might be that will hopefully make me laugh my ass off so hard I will fall on my chair, smack my head on my table, and give myself my ninth concussion of all time. To give you guys a couple examples of some of the craziest stuff I've heard, there was a band, I can't remember which one it is, but it was one of the MVK music group bands. They chloroformed their lead singer, dragged him to a beach in Florida, buried him halfway in the sand, put a bunch of ketchup around to make it look like a sharp bit off his legs when he woke up. 
Um, let's see what else is there. This band called Waking Bye. Terror, probably the one that I always remember. Their guitarist had to go to the bathroom while they're on the road in a van, so he peed in like a like a like a big gulp kind of cup. <laughs> yeah. Threw the cup out the window because yeah, what else is he gonna do with it? The cup came in through the back window because oh, the window is open and their drummer essentially no. got a golden shower Hell on yeah. the road. <laughs> or I've heard I heard a couple other ones like I've heard a bunch of random poop stories about people having to go to the bathroom literally in the medians of uh, of highways because their van <laughs> broke down and it's a problem. Right. I heard the mm-hmm. same story from two different bands, though. One, because the guy was in this other band beforehand and was there when it happened. Then I had that same band on literally five podcasts later, and the guy that it happened to told me the first-hand account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's insane. What the hell? <laughs> or, uh, we don't have any crazy stories, do we? I mean, our crazy stories are more centered in... Stupid like, parties. That yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, hey, okay. I mean, I hey, I'm okay with I'm okay with those stories. If you want to tell those, I'm. I mean, <laughs> I I've got crazy stuff too that I can share with you guys if you want because I just kind of add more to it because, yeah, we've all done some crazy shit in our lives. But I'll let you guys take it away because this is more about you guys. Oh yeah. Um. Oh Lord. Yeah, take it away, boys. <laughs> oh, man, I feel like we're, I'm the most wonder bread of all of us. I, think, so I like, feel like we we have stuff and stories. It's just. We're I mean, blanking what, because we're on a podcast. Yeah, what do you yeah. Mean? like? What am, what am I comfortable with? I mean, I, I've, got, I've got a vodka night. Yeah, vodka night for you is fun. Vodka night's fun. Vodka night. Yeah, yeah. it's a vodka night. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's, sort of like, a, that's like a combination story of me. This, this, this is more of a combination story of me and Anthony. Okay. I'll All take right, it. What's your, what's your name first? I'm, I'm Wes Evans. I play rhythm guitar in the band. Mm-hmm. And... Oh, and then I'm, I'm Anthony. I have tambourine. Um, <laughs> He's really I, good at it. I'm really. Good. He's got a gift. Yeah, he, he's shaking that thing, man. But um, I do vocals, and yeah, vodka night was oh, interesting. Man. There, we were at a party, and you had never had like, you were never a no, vodka no, person. No, 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 no. Um, so Anthony is in another band, and the singer of that band threw a party at her house for Halloween. It was a costume party. Mm-hmm. and That's i wasn't right. really wearing a costume i was wearing like a, a black tank top and like eye makeup and i was like oh i'm just a rock star for halloween or you're the emo dominic toretto from fast and furious yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's literally west that was what he looked more, like. more like that yeah <laughs> and we got there and i had this was like when i had first joined the band so i hadn't done a lot of partying yet so i wasn't really accustomed to doing this kind of thing so we got there before everyone else got there, and I decided that I was gonna just start going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, do? you had never really like drank the whole other um, than like like you had beer and whiskey and like yeah, but I, I had never had vodka, and so <laughs> I think I was like three full solo cups in, and then I can't remember the rest. So yeah, that's, <laughs> this is, that's, that's where I come in. Is. So uh, I was just kind of I was tending to him. He was on the floor, you know, kind of basically blacked out, and um. You know, three, four hours goes by and the party's starting to die down. Five hours, everyone's starting to kind of leave. And um, I was, you know, this is with the, uh, an older lineup of the band. Um, and I had asked, you know, what, what's the situation with West or who's going to take him home? I was looking for him and no one was there. They had fucking left me with them. So I had to <laughs> scrape him up off the floor and basically, it took me like 30 minutes to get him I, from I like the back that. room you, to you my kept car. Saying, they're, they're kicking you out. They're kicking you out. And I was like, <laughs> why can't I just sleep here? He was trying, he was trying <laughs> to spend the night just on this stranger's floor. That would have been and, awesome. uh, <laughs> So I, I scraped him up and in the span of like 30 minutes, dragged him into my car and then I just dropped him off at our drummer at the didn't time's I, house. Didn't I puke on your you, prom you, Yeah, you, I had, oh yeah, because I was, um, I had a, I had a photo shoot and I wore like a, stupid jacket that i wore to prom and um white jacket it was a white jacket and so he basically just like Peeped popped all over, over my prom. fucking prom jacket yeah and yeah i dropped him off at my yeah. drummer at the time's house and i was like here you go your problem i'm out i <laughs> remember waking up at christian's apartment and i was like george <laughs> is that you on the couch <laughs> and you were like what? how the fuck did i get here <laughs> how did I get and i was like <laughs> Where am I, man? <laughs> uh, that, that was that was the worst hangover of my life. I think I puked blood in the bathtub the next morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, was oh, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh dear God, that sounds that sounds just 
Well, on your end, not too much fun, but however, looking back at it, that's funny as all. Oh, it's funny. It's a funny all. story. Because <laughs> we all, and there's a picture of um of him like on that hangover because he still had some like makeup on from the night before. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> I, I don't know where the photo is, but like God. the video, uh, him singing West Virginia, drunk as fuck. Oh, oh yeah, you were singing West Virginia. <laughs> we have a lot of videos. There's videos all in yeah. our Snapchat memories, just of like. Dumb really shit. strange shit that we don't remember half of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God. Hey, man, those are fun. some of the best times that you have when all of a sudden it's oh, just yeah. you don't remember them. I had that mm-hmm. happen to me back in 2015. I was in uh, Pan City Beach for spring break. It was St. Patrick's Day, and by the time my friends had woken up, I was already like six, seven beers deep and a couple of shots of whiskey. Then I decided to take down like three quarters of a bottle of really good tequila. Got on the beach. It I was about 1230, and I was like, oh, shit. I went like this for maybe like but I felt like it was 10 seconds. Wipe my eyes like this, open them up. It was dark outside. I was sitting at a picnic table in front of our hotel with a whole pizza in front of me and a beer right next to me. I looked at my phone, it was 8.30. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? So I, had I to went I back had... into my hotel and I was like, what the fuck happened, guys? And they didn't detail <laughs> everything that happened from that mo- from the moment I said I blacked out to when I finally came to. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I could have actually seen that because apparently I was on a fucking roll. Just going up to every group of people at the beach. All of a sudden, my friend's like, oh, you know, there's some girls we want to go and talk to. Eh, they're getting a little skittish. And all of a sudden, like, wait, where the hell is Kevin? I'm already over there. Drunk as hell. <laughs> Apparently, somehow coherent at this moment. What I found out, though, was blackout drunk me looks out for sober me so damn well. <laughs> no, definitely. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Joseph! Yeah, Joseph. What's up? Joseph, you should give him that. All right, I'll go. I'll go next. Um, my name is Joseph O'Herrick. I play lead guitar. Um, as for funny stories, I'm definitely blanking right now. But the first one that comes to mind yeah, was um, we had <laughs> that. That is less <laughs> of a funny story. But, um, no, it was a. Uh, you guys remember New Year's? We had everyone come over for um for New Year's, um, and we all hung out and got very drunk. But it was great because uh. Anthony's girlfriend brought like a bunch of fireworks and shit. Oh, no. um, right, West knows like, that yeah. was terrifying. Yeah, don't we, play so, with fireworks. We were just playing with them out in the back, and I had a fucking bottle rocket in my head. I had two of them, and I lit them both off, and I wasn't looking where it was aiming, and I it like shoots off, and I look up, and it hits West straight in the forehead, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, he just, and he just falls in the grass. I'm like, shit. <laughs> he was like, okay. Like, you just killed him. But I looked up, and he's just like. I, I remember. I remember standing there and then a flash of white and then I'm on the ground. <laughs> and then he's oh, like, man, my head kind of hurts. <laughs> oh, <holy laughs> shit. Which is 2020. <laughs> yeah. You should not have done that. Okay, that, was okay. a, that was a weird night. But right, I, so- I just saw the flash on his forehead and then he's on the ground. I'm like, fuck. We're on like a Harry Potter fucking battle with the <laughs> fire That's what know. we were doing. I mean, that's pretty much how I was probably knew that 2020 was not going to go very well when it starts Honestly. out with him taking a bottle rocket straight. <laughs> <to the house. laughs> It was a bad omen, dude. That was a bad that's, omen. I, honestly, that's one thing I've kind of learned was fireworks on New Year's never mix. But the other difference, too, is like when because you guys are in Florida, when you're shooting off fireworks on New Year's, at least you're doing it when it's, you know, still kind of warmish outside. We yeah, did that up here in outside. Milwaukee, and it was like the one time we did it was maybe like 15 degrees outside. And it's oh, one of those it was yeah. like those fireworks. You have like the like the like the like flame retardant cardboard tube and it just shoot mm-hmm. up. Well, the tube snapped off the bottom, so we stuck it in the snow we lit the thing and then the tube kind of faced forward right at all of us that were staying there. We're like, Oh shit. All of a sudden this firework comes off and it whizzes straight across my eyes. It was probably like, if I'm here, this is how close it was. It was like, I'm so freaking oh. scary. I, mm. Like, yeah. I, and I've had, I've had fireworks malfunction where like, like just when we were just with like family shit on New Year's where, uh, you know, it, it, it's like a mortar and instead of shooting like, you know, 50 feet in the air, it shoots like five inches and then explodes. Oh, yeah, I love that. I'm Those are that terrifying. <laughs> what, what I've learned for New Year's now is when it comes down to it, instead of the fireworks, let's just get a bunch of bottles of champagne, pop the bottles, and then well, this happened a couple of years ago. Was all right. I bought a bunch of bottles of champagne. Out. We popped the bottles. Everything was good. Well, I was kind of getting. I was still stuck in this max aid depression. So I was just trying to have some fun, just trying to like loosen up. And yeah. we're outside, pop bottles. I'm like drinking the champagne. Like I'm without a shirt on. It's three degrees outside. And oh, all of a sudden, God. all my friends that have the bottles, they pop theirs, and they just pour them on me. <laughs> oh, you freeze that. Fuck that. And then I'm like, oh, shit, now I've got all this champagne over me. How do I get it off? 
oh, look, snow. And I start making snow <laughs> angels in the snow. <laughs> and my friends are telling me, Kevin, get up. Get in the house so you don't freeze. I'm like, I know when I'm going to freeze. I'll get inside soon. I probably walk inside about a minute later. I'm like, they're like, Kevin, what do you need? A towel. So I was like, a <laughs> towel. <laughs> Get this man. Yeah, I can't do it because like I I grew up in Florida, so like I can't. I, I I have family in Massachusetts, so like I've been around snow, and it's I can't I can't do deal with the cold. It's not it's not in the cards for me. I've lived in it Florida for me. all my life. You what? I've lived in Florida all my life, and I've only seen snow once. It was like negative twenty degrees outside. And that was I, pretty I, recent. I got though, out yeah. there like fully like covered everything, and I was like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going back inside. Oh, so I'll make it even crazier for you because I went to school up in Minnesota. So like those kind of days were got common in the winter and I'd always bike everywhere to class because it was if I walked anywhere to class, it would take me 20, 25 minutes. So if I biked, it would take me maybe five. So I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'll bike. But biking when it's negative 10 degrees outside. No, I can't. I I, I literally had like the hat on. I, I had this. I had like one of those neck scarves on. So I'm like the only thing that was visible in my eyes. But any if you ever drop, if you ever have your head outside, like going anything more than like five miles an hour when it's cold outside, oh, your yeah, eyes so. hurt and you have to look mm-hmm. down. So I bought ski goggles. <laughs> I think nice. I took gloves on mask. Like I I looked like. Uh, I basically look like um the kid from a Christmas story. Yeah. With his arms out. Like I looked like that, but on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> It was oh, it yeah. was quite the time. I haven't done that since I left college in like 2016 because, well, I have a car now. Yeah, and it mm-hmm. protects my face. <laughs> Heat, having a heater is such a nice nice thing because it gets sometimes pretty cold in Florida. I wouldn't say like anywhere near negative, you know, 15, but anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it in like the 20s a couple times. And it, it's yeah, for like, two weeks it gets like not hot, and then it just goes straight back to 90 yeah. plus every day. Yeah, but we like the two weeks. The two weeks. Are- <laughs> I wish it was called a lot longer. I actually yeah. kind of like seventy degrees. I mean, it's it's in my experience, it's always easier to get warm than it is to like yeah get cool on a hot day. Well, because yeah. to get to get warm, you can always add on more layers. You can always yeah. add as as yeah. much. When it comes to getting cool, you can only take off so much. Yeah, and like a cold. Sh- yeah. No one likes cold showers. Like it's yeah exactly unless you're coming in some from something like really 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 hot then it yeah. oh yeah i mean but like i because i have a friend who he he just takes cold showers like that's how he naturally i'm i'm like you're fucking insane like no that's not a good feeling i am not friends that's right George does. Like i didn't showers. Showers. i hate do like cold showers i hate that you like cold showers that's right. He does that. And and this one time we were all at West House. And I think it was West <laughs> that threw an ice bucket into the shower and we were all sitting there waiting for like George to scream. It just never happened. He didn't know it happened. <laughs> did he did notice. not notice. <laughs> well, George, I gotta ask, what do you do in the band? Because I'm pretty sure that just covers your wacky story. The fact that you like cold showers and when they ice bucket you in the shower, you just don't even notice. Didn't give a yeah. fuck. Uh, I'm George. Jorge, how do you want to pronounce it? I play bass, and yeah, I take cold showers. <laughs> that's, that's his bio. Dude. I fucking that's, that's why that. he's a weirdo. Yeah. I, I tried taking cold showers for like a week, and I couldn't make the week. Like it's I, supposed to be healthier. It's probably. supposed yeah. to help you. Like yeah, it's supposed to help. The thing, I take it for uh, mental health because I either have to push myself to do something amazing that day or just cold showers. Mm-hmm. Then I go the lazy way around. I take cold showers every day, and then at night, hot showers. <laughs> It's good for your mental health. Okay. Yeah. Just pushing yourself. Okay. Now the funny story. Do you like hyper pop? Oh God, I don't oh, like the story. I don't like, I don't like the story. I'm, I'm take a break. Okay. okay, you guys are saying you don't like the story. Now I have to hear this because I'm more than curious. <laughs> I'm well, I, I, don't I, don't like I don't know what the story. I don't know what the story is. I I don't know. Hyper pop. I'm yeah. in the story and I don't like it. We hated. <laughs> wasn't I? We hated hyper pop with a passion. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> but, that's it we got <laughs> actually how much can i say on this podcast <laughs> as, as much as you want honestly i've again like i told you, you, you some of the it. crazy stuff i've heard i've honestly i've heard stories of i i, I think there was a band that was one on a podcast one time i'm pretty sure they were high as shit when they came on and they were just talking like crazy i'm just like you know i'm just gonna let this roll because this is too much fun so i just yeah. let the conversation be whatever you want to share is whatever you want to share oh well, 
Honestly, I'm just kidding. It's just such an area. I'm like, it's a dangerous thing to this group. I was trying to say, I got high as fuck. <laughs> in West, we're right here in this room. We turned off the lights and we decided we're going to like hyper pop today. <laughs> we oh, okay. spent about four hours just laying down. That's right. You guys like did it to yourselves. Uh, yes. We <laughs> tortured ourselves into like a hyper pop. We lay in the bed. God. Every time one of us would like try and get up, we just push the other one down. <laughs> and he was like, a whole playlist, like an hour long playlist on repeat over and over of hyper pop songs. But we just go like this, trying to like it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we forced yourself to like it. I, I just remember we were like smoking out front, and I was like, You ever heard of hyper pop? And you were like, <laughs> God. No. And I played you a song, and you were like, We're gonna learn to love this tonight. <laughs> and I was like, No, God, please. God. <laughs> Well, like, I came over the day after that, and and you guys were sitting listening to Hyperpop and doing like the fist thing. I'm like, what the fuck is <laughs> happening? I'm like, what is what is this music, dude? <laughs> I'm like, they're really into it. I don't know what this music is. Damn. Yeah, we love it now. Yeah, Hyperpop is great. It's great. Yeah. So there's no such thing as bad genres. You just haven't listened to them long enough. Just gonna hype yourself into liking it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I got to do that to my brother now just because he's been definitely partaking in some more of the psychedelic drug activity. And I'm like, you know, I probably could get him into some like diff some of the kind of music that I really like. So I'm like, OK, let's see what happens. Honestly, I'm going to go in. I'm going to go into his stuff. I'm going to go into his place one day and be like, OK, it's October. You know what that means? What does that mean? I'm like, we're going to listen to some horror Oh, music God. today and all of a sudden we're gonna, i'm gonna start blasting like ice nine kills motionless and white his girlfriend will come over and pretty much will be like okay we're doing this because I, she loves the same kind of music that i do don't know how that <laughs> happened i'm like you know what i'm fucking rolling with this so we're gonna <laughs> force my brother to like metalcore specifically Good, stuff nice. that has more of a gothic horror trope behind it <laughs> a lot of cold subjects yeah. <laughs> exactly all right we got one person. more <laughs> no i can do that oh hey you we got one uh, more introduction Oh God! My name is Corey. I play the drums. Keep your sense uh, Keep your sense I feel like I want to talk about the first time I got baked with these guys uh, with a bong. They're but, all like, weed stories, by the way. We gotta I, yeah. clear that. They're I, all weed stories. I don't know. I can't like remember it as like a cohesive story though <laughs> you were probably high yeah <laughs> wow. i was just i i took like three hits and i i don't have a high tolerance at all because i don't do it as much as <laughs> I, I was, smoke, but the record, I was on the couch and then i just remember waking up in constant cutscenes of yeah uh and then <laughs> I like the challenge of standing up and walking, and I, it felt like a video game, and it was great. And that's what it I was. I tried to fight Joseph, but I didn't know how to. That's right. That's right. That's the <laughs> one time I've ever been in a fight. Uh, yeah, you guys like went out in the backyard, and we're just like, "All right, we're fighting now." Yeah. And I'm like, "This is." Great. I'm in a cool position because whenever they do get like super baked, I get to witness all the high stories. He just gets to like, watch. Because I, I don't, I don't smoke because we just doesn't agree with me at all. Yeah, no. You like to sit and watch. I, I, like to, I like to just watch, watch everything unfold. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sitting there watching them just deteriorate in front of me. It's the best thing. It's like I, I don't like doing it now because I don't know what it is, but the the smell just like really makes me nauseous now. Yeah, I have motion sickness, so like when yeah. I, whenever I smoke and my vision just goes like like I start to like move too far in front, I start to get just greened out yeah. super quick. So yeah. just but that experience was nice. Yeah. So. That like, was like, so funny. Like though, when you're trying because... to fight him, was it like a video game where it's like you just don't know all the moves that you don't yeah. have? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like you're but, trying like, to play like, punches. Like, just like <laughs> you, yeah, you were playing at like a video game. Yeah, yeah like, street, like Street Fighter. They they were like standing there, like holding like stances and like moving <laughs> like. like <laughs> It was like Mortal Kombat if you knew one combo, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole game. And poorly. That was so funny, though, because Corey would just sit on the couch outside and stare into, like, one point in space for, like, 30 minutes. And then we would go and, like, fight, and it would be, like, a side quest, I guess. And then he'd do it again. And that was the whole, that was the whole uh, fight. Yeah, yeah. Really funny, but every time I looked at Joseph, he would make a face, like, oh, and, and then right, I was fucking with you. it would scare me because it would change form. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, you look like Squidward. <laughs> Squidward's house. Fuck you, Dick. Squidward's house. <laughs> 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 it was funny. Easter Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but like if they know what you're talking about because like i use, i don't smoke either if i smoke or do anything like that like for me now it has to be on like a rather special occasion so yeah last time i did it was in 2019 when i was in amsterdam because well it's kind of hard not to partake amsterdam. when you're in amsterdam <laughs> but, like, but i think the last time i actually like did it just with my friends because i actually like watching people do stupid shit when like basically what you guys did my friends that we were this was maybe like early 2016 maybe 2015 i don't even remember but they were do, they started doing dabs i'm like okay i'll try after my buddy was like here peer okay. pressure. <laughs> he was basically poking me saying peer pressure for a minute I'm like okay <laughs> i said you light it though yeah that was a bad idea because i took a big ass hit and then i sat in my in front of my buddy's couch not on the couch in front of it with my <laughs> mouth wide open mm-hmm. drool literally coming down the side of it and we watched like two hours of rick and morty and then the <laughs> next day when i got and the next day when i got home I was trying to remember what we were watching because I remember it was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's Rick and Morty. Like, what the fuck did I just watch? So I went and watched the six episode of Rick and Morty that we watched to see if what I saw was what I saw. I was more than surprised (laughs) to actually realize that what I had watched was a real thing, and I did not imagine that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I fucking love that show, man. Oh my god! You showed me that. That was ridiculous. Oh no! Wait, that's the no, no. (laughs) I don't even want to go there. There is this claymation show that we found that's on like Adult Swim somewhere. And what robot chicken? Shivering Truth. The Shivering Truth. The Shivering. It's horrible. It's horrible. You you should watch it because it's it's (laughs) terrifying. Like there's it's there's not even a good show. It's It's a great show. No, (laughs) it's a combination of unsettling imagery. Yeah, Yeah. it just it makes you sit there and you're like, why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You make that like the the one face the entire show of just like. You guys are really selling the show. The entire episode. It makes you think, but you don't want to. I like a lot of weird stuff, but something about that just <laughs> it's just great. Please watch oh. it. Yes. All right, then then I got I got some for you guys because I brought some in a podcast maybe forty episodes ago because I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever actually experienced, and I'll pass it on to you guys. So I was going by myself one night just here. I had me, you know, maybe seven, eight beers at this point. I'm like, well, shit, let me put on a movie. I don't know what the fuck to put on. Then I remembered, I was like, oh, I want to watch a Nick Cage movie. Then I found out there was a Uh-oh. new Nick Cage movie out there called <laughs> Willy's Wonderland, where he literally <laughs> goes and beats up Chuck E. Cheese animatronic characters. Oh, and old, it does, does not speak during the movie, only <laughs> screams. They're just like, I, I need this. I need this. Oh, right yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I want it. So I watched Let's the go. movie, drunk as shit. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever watched. I told my brother, I'm like, you got to watch this movie. He's like, should I watch it high or drunk? I said, honestly, watch it both. Watch it twice. One time, <laughs> once drunk. And you're going to enjoy it either way. So I What's will it? pass it along to you guys. So definitely do that. The movie's called Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland. We we'll need this. Up. Yeah, well, let me search that up a second. Movie nights. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you you guys will go from being forced to like hyperpunk to being forced to absolutely love anything and everything Nick Cage has ever acted in. It's a horror action movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fucking interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But okay, we've 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 had we've had a good amount of time with these stories and absolutely love it. But of course, with cold subject, we're here because of the music, and that is one thing I do want to jump into. And like I said from the beginning of the podcast. When it came to me trying to figure out what your guys sound like, what I could potentially classify it as, just so I could give everyone like an idea that listens, I was completely and utterly lost because I'm like, there is so much going on in your music from different pieces of like, okay, this could be metalcore, this could be post-hardcore, these could be deathcore with some of these like brutal unclean screams. There's some hard rock in there, like there's some alt rock, and I'm like, and it's all in the same songs too. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? So I gotta ask. Well, how the hell you guys come up with your music? Because this is some of the most insane stuff that I've ever heard in terms of blending many different genres into just a single song. Wait till the EP. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> I, know, some we, I, know, I think some of the part of the beauty of like the music that we kind of make is because we're all from different genres, like genres and backgrounds. I know that, that there's he's in a side project called Beps of Basayu, which is like a more deathcore style like music. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came from um, the alt rock background, and you know they all came from. Like, there's all sorts of different genres that kind of have been incorporated. Um, yeah, it's just sort of the beauty. Like whenever we're throwing riffs each other's way, um, it'll usually start with him writing a, a rhythm track, and then him putting drums on it, 
and we mm -hmm. like with each layer that gets added um we just kind of add our different backgrounds yeah and, like i i have a lot of influence from uh deftones and nirvana and so i have a lot of more jazzy chords that i use and like weird grungy uh chord progressions that i put into my rhythms and usually I'll start a concept and I write a riff and then Corey comes and builds onto it. Some blast beats. Yeah, yeah. Like he yeah, comes in more of a dance score background. <laughs> and then from there, George comes in with his bass and then Joseph with his lead. Uh, I come in and I change everything. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. And, and we all have different like styles of playing and all come from very different musical backgrounds. So it just kind of blends together to create this weird sound that yeah. is called subject. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun too. Like, like because I think you described it really well. Where there's like parts of it where the, it gets super heavy, and the parts of it where it just kind of flips, and it's some like alt rock in there. It's like mm -hmm. taking you know the listener on sort of like a trip through who we are as musicians, you know. And I feel like yeah. that combination just kind of brings out some originality in terms of like our all encompassing sound and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you're going to end up using so many different, if you guys, all five of you have completely different or, you know, almost completely different influences over the course of your life, and you're going to end up creating a band, you're creating songs that everyone has a different piece in, of course, you're going to point everything from deathcore, you know, more of like a grungy, jazzy, you know, more kind of that classical style, bringing some all right, bringing some metalcore, whatever it might be. But the key, of course, is, is really working with how the song is really being built and progressing, because... We've seen many different bands blend many different genres before. We've seen them do it successfully. I mean, look at Easy Core with like pop punk and metalcore being blended together. Look at Dave Remember Chunk, No Captain Chunk. I mean, Linkin Park is another great example of blending hip hop, pop, and rap along with this more like new metal sound as well. It's just how it's basically it's you can take so many different influences and anything can be put together. And especially in this day and age with oh, yeah. the amount of technology, the amount of different recording procedures that we have. But it's how it's done and how it flows together, which is the main thing. Because if you want to, I mean, I'll use, I'll use Ice Nine Kills, the perfect example. From Hip to Be Scared, like taking a look at the, he like kind of like the more melodic, heavier chorus, then going into that like Huey Lewis and the newest style bridge to a brutal breakdown. It all depends upon how the flow and transition really works within that. So with you guys being able to kind of start out somewhere and then build on top of that using your influences, but understanding where the song is going, then these songs are going to have a more full cohesive unit and feel to them and natural flow from one section to the next, no matter what you change it to. Just given the fact that you guys know exactly where you're going with this and you're making it a natural progression instead of something that's just completely forced on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one thing like um, one thing I like I pride cold subject with a whole bunch is just our like an ability to kind of change up structure without it being incohesive. I think like that's because mm -hmm. um, I know I come from like a, a classical music and jazz background. because I'm a trumpet player as well. And so like in the same way where like, you know, class some classical music, there's sections that are seemingly completely different. There's no real cohesion but then also having like backgrounds of you know grunge and punk and um you know metalcore and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that sort of provides like a structure that we can then kind of move around and i think like this band does a really good job of like seamlessly transitioning like not necessarily doing you know verse chorus verse chorus end of song but ra rather you know like changing it up without making it too confusing and just like out of place you know what i mean yeah, because if you kind of change up abruptly and out of place, I'm not going to lie. There's times that easily could work out because I've seen Absolutely. some bands where all of a sudden it's like they take a complete 180 on something mm -hmm. and you don't expect it. But it's just because of how that tra of how that transition made. Maybe it's somewhere it's just like you go into it where it's like you go into something heavy and all of a sudden it just cuts off and you get into something a lot smoother, a lot softer. It's that kind of transition can really bring forward this whole entire cohesive feel to it because it's this blank feel is going to give you this feeling of change overall. But the key is, especially with how much you guys work with so many different influences and so many different genres is just letting the natural progression of this flow when you guys are creating the music so that when the final product comes out and we're listening to it, we don't feel like anything's out of place. We don't feel like anything is forced. We feel like these, tr these progressions and these transitions are so well done to the point where it's just, again, when Wes starts building on something with a, with a rhythm riff and all of a sudden then... 
Corey comes in, kind of builds the drums behind it. Then you start mm-hmm. to get a feel of where the song is going, how this can all work out, and you get a natural progression from when all of a sudden, you know, you get the bass to come in, you get the lead guitars to come in, then you get the vocals to come in over it and just really also use the vocals as a guide through that as well because the vocal tone can also be used as a massive transitional piece. Oh, absolutely. I know, like, um, there's been times where, like, we've written stuff and, like, stuff doesn't necessarily make sense to me like when i'm tracking vocals and then after i like after we figure out like like the vocals is sort of like a good top layer of like glue that kind of combines Mm -hmm. everything together it's just sort of like the finishing you know sprinkles on a sunday so to speak um yeah i I, doing the vocals is always fun always fun for me i do feel like this this ep for us is really like locking in kind of our writing process and, and how we work together because we got a lot of different sounds that we put on this. Um, but it it all sounds like us because I think in each song you get um, a little bit of, of Wes or Corey's or George's, you know, it, uh, influences in the instrumental part. And then Anthony has a, a really cool way of shifting the direction um, towards his influences, even after everything's been written. But um, I think the EP is just really teaching us a lot about how to kind of write together but that's what you want in the end because you're not going to write the same way as a band like metallica would or a band like a day remember would or a band like under oath would or some like nirvana would because you aren't those guys and you guys all come from so many different backgrounds so when it comes to writing you guys aren't going to follow the same formula as nearly anyone else what you guys are going to do is you're going to have to come up with your own formula for writing that you guys are going to work best within and if mm-hmm. on this ep that you're coming out with if that's what you've ended up creating then you're going to end up having a, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to say a much easier time writing music. It's going to be a much easier time trying so many different things to all of a sudden with how many different influences you guys work with plug kind of doing like a plug and play kind of thing. Like, Oh, okay, let's see if this kind of style works here. Let's see. We can build off of this because Mm -hmm. this might work. This might feel more natural and see how the song progresses because you might have an idea where all of a sudden a bridge might be better suited for something like, you know, more so, like a softer kind of thing that's going to end up having like a softer kind of instrumental break. But all of a sudden it's like, okay, this softer bridge could end up building up or like a closer to the end. Then you get some brutal breakdown on top of it, but it fits better within the song. It's just letting that happen is a huge key to actually making sure that this music that you guys are working on really sounds the way that you want to sound. It portrays the message that you're trying to portray accurately. And it comes out as this whole entire flowing cohesive unit rather than a bunch of parts assembled together. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we we definitely butt heads sometimes when it comes to like, you know, the different styles, you know, so, but usually that's kind of also adding to the um, like, you know, the the sound itself, because usually what ends up happening is someone will have one idea, someone will have another idea. And one way or another, those ideas will come together into something a little bit more seamless that kind of appeals to both of, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or another thing, too, you guys can always do is like, okay, someone has an idea that they're very adamant on that's in one cell. Someone has a different idea that they're very adamant on another cell. You guys can start working with both and see if all of a sudden, like, kind of like what you said, like, you know, maybe they might come together or might you might kind of make like some sort of weird compromise as you're working on this stuff that really fits the overall flow. But if you keep, but if you have this openness and you have this trust to really work on something like this with all these different styles, you're going to creating something to, to the point where the songwriting process is you're going to feel free. You're going to feel trusting within each other to try so many different things so that you can easily get to not only that, like, like, uh, that God, I'm already messing up my words that just like <laughs> understanding point or that compromise point, mm-hmm. but you're going to, you could also try someone's like, okay, maybe all of a sudden, you know, maybe something more post hardcore actually really works out a lot better than this. than something that's more alt rock or something that's more of a death core base or something that's got more of that grunge base. It could easily be something like that, but the trust that you guys have to have in order to try something like that is absolutely paramount to the writing process. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And like, and it's a huge thing to keep in mind is like, it it varies from song to song. Like, what the song, what each song would dictate, and what each song would need stylistically. Like, you know, there's yeah. going to be a heavier song, especially in a sound like in our a sound like ours, where there's a lot of all encompassing genres. You're gonna have like this one's a little bit more heavy. This one's a little bit more alt rock. And that's okay. Like that's it's okay to have com- combinations that gear towards a certain genre. But not only that, but it's just it's those different combinations can easily work out a lot better if you have them when you're trying to discuss certain things about music that might be a little bit more personal due to the fact that 
something that you're trying to describe might work out better describing it through more alt rock base it would be more of a death core base yeah. and so whenever I go, I go deep in music whenever i'm reviewing music the first thing i always look at is the meaning because then i can see kind of okay what if it's something that with the sound after i listen to the song that i just am not getting into if i take a look at the meaning i understand where the artist is trying to come from then i can start to get a little bit more of a look into their mindset from the instrumentals from the vocals as well to see how they're attacking this idea especially if it's a more personal thing because I like a lot, some of the stuff they talk about, you know, depression, suicidal tendencies, fear, whatever it might be. I've gone through a lot of this stuff myself. So when I think about it, I'm like, how do I relate to some of these things where if a, a band's going to end up creating something that's got more of like a lighter alt rock, kind of more of a poppy thing, that's going to be something that I really associate a lot more with that heavy metalcore side of a sound. Yeah, mm-hmm. I might not connect it, but if I understand it, then I can see where they're coming from and I can see how the song actually really works as a whole instead of just being like, oh, I don't like it. Why? It doesn't sound like I think it should. No, it, it sounds like the artist sh- thinks it should, but it just mm-hmm. doesn't connect with me. But it could easily connect with someone else who connects those different emotions with those different sounds where they might go lighter on those ideas where I go heavier. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So and I think you- like just the position is also really a really cool thing as well. Like when you're spe- like when you're on purposely, like kind of switching it up where, you know, you're throwing sort of like I think I've, I've seen a lot of that in like a lot of pop music. I've seen a lot in like today's day and age where like, you'll have some of that more like intense like themes, but it's played over like, you know, a cutesy kind of like a upbeat sort of style. Like that juxtaposition's kind of, I find that really cool. Kind of some like bullet by Hollywood undead where they're talking about killing yourself yeah. and it's just all like happy, like. Yeah. At first time I heard that song, that threw me off completely. I'm like, Oh, this song sounds so like upbeat and happy. But then I look at this, I'm like, Oh shit, this is not the case. Mm-hmm. Right. Or like, or like even like the opposite side of it, like pizza by Attila, like, where it's just like, a, it's kind of like, it's, it's a gimmick. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like the juxtaposing lyrics to the actual style is sort of the best of point. Yeah. Like you're trying to go super heavy, super dark with somebody you're talking about pizza motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, but you know sometimes that actually really works out well because there are a lot of times where i'm gonna use bullet by hollywood undead for example because there's times where you are thinking about that and like when you finally make that decision and people finally make the decision that have attempted but then that didn't go through with it it's kind of like one thing i've seen was when people have made that decision and have thought about like okay and i'm gonna end it they end up having this more of like this blissful interaction just because they finally can understand it but then there's a lot of people because I've gone through this myself as well, where I've attempted a, I attempted a couple times in 2017 because I was just not doing well. And mm-hmm. there's a, there's a long story behind, it, but I won't get behind it. But it's just like there are times where, it, where it's like you know just thinking about just letting go of that pain ends up really helping out, and like it kind of mm-hmm. gives you this more like positive look out in the end. But then all of a sudden it's just it, it it all depends about like music really takes a good look at that and really shows a lot of different ways because so many people experience that. So when it comes to you know a heavier sound or like that just prediction sound or like a lighter sound or like a more like a deeper synth kind of feel, whatever it might be. It all depends upon how we look at music and how you guys as artists relate to that, relate to those emotions and then relay them in your songs through the sound of the instrumentals, through the way the drum patterns are, through the way the bass and the guitar tones are and how they end up transitioning into having these different distortions. And then with the vocals, the different styles of like clean, unclean raspiness, maybe like a clean rasp sound, maybe like a really deep guttural sound, maybe this very calm, soothing, melancholic feel. Or just also just the volume as well. There's so much going on here to the point where whatever you're trying to end up putting out in your music, especially with how many different influences you guys have, just the way that everything can fit and the way that you guys can play around with so many different things, you can absolutely impactfully get the emotion you're trying to get with the meaning of those songs coming through here in any given moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. music, music is storytelling for sure. Like, yeah. music is a huge storyteller, and it's a huge like conveyor of emotion. It, it's it's storytelling, but it's also healing at the same time as well because you get to understand more things about yourself. You get to understand more things about how you interact with the world as well. And I mean, it, it's it's a very powerful thing. So that's why, like, what like with live shows being back right now. Why it's like I don't want them to go away because it, it for I know for me it's my home away from home. I love going to those shows. I don't care like I don't care if someone is like oh you know you're gonna go by yourself. Hell yeah, I'm gonna go by myself. I'm mm-hmm. gonna make friends there. Yeah, there you go. And especially like from a performer's side, I think like we've we've all sort of like found like found a home on the stage, like being able to perform for people. It's it's 
to be able to see like what you just described, like, you know, being able to go to shows and finding that community. Mm -hmm. Like I'm watching that from the stage perspective. I'm like watching that happen. And it's such like a heartwarming thing to see when like, I, I would reference our last show uh, as an example. Like we probably had our biggest turnout easily. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it really was an, an amazing kind of community experience where there was a lot of people that did know each other and a lot of people who didn't know each other that mm -hmm. were all just sort of together and they were all jamming out to our stuff. And like to be a part of that from a performer standpoint is such like a gratifying thing. Yeah. I mean, as performers, you guys are kind of the catalyst of that because a lot of us that are going to these shows are going to see you guys perform, are going to hear your music and hear mm -hmm. your interpretations on these different subjects because we connect them in one way or another. But the beauty of music is if I go to a show and the person next to me, we don't know each other, but all of a sudden we're listening to your music and we are connecting with it, but we could be connecting with those meanings in two completely different ways. Yeah. But it's all for the positive because we connect them in different ways due to the fact that we've gone through different things in life. I haven't gone yeah. through the same stuff that any of you guys have gone through. So I'm going to connect the music in a different way through different past experiences, through my mindset, whatever it might be. And that's where it comes to the whole entire like family aspect of it because we all connect with it in some – like if we're going to be there at a live show, we're all going to connect with that music in some kind of a positive way. That's where yeah. the commonality comes in. And when it comes to how much music I end up listening to and deep diving into, that's what I really like to pull out is just like really understanding where you guys are coming from when you write this stuff, especially with how dynamic your guys' stuff is. Because it pulls in so many different emotions so many, from you, so, so many different directions, so many different thoughts and feelings that you might have that – Honestly, you could really deep dive into you and I through even just this year and through ever since I've been doing this, listen music, I found out more things about myself probably in the last three years than I have the previous 23 due to the fact that I've listened to so much more music and have gained so much more perspective by understanding where the musicians and where you guys are writing your music and how it's coming forward alongside how just it connects with me and that could, and that's going to go for everybody else as well. When people hold up time and says your music changed my life. It's like, I know some people are like, Oh no, that's crazy. Like, no, but that's actually true. It's, it's actually true because it makes them, it gives them hope. It gives them inspiration. And if you, and you're, and like music, like your guys stuff with how dynamic it is, it could easily do that because it can convey so many different complexities about a different topic that you're trying to talk about, whatever it might be. Yeah. Absolutely. I think a huge thing too, is just like, um different types of music that, like I, a huge thing that i like about cold subject sound is because of its variety there is sort of something for everyone mm -hmm. um so like someone who's like let's say just kind of getting into metal you know they, they would find something on the ep that they would probably like resonate with like my advice to anyone like who, li who likes us like who has a really polarized view of music is like you know listen to jazz listen to classical like so switch it up let's listen to something that you've never listened to Mm -hmm. right and like try to not i'm not saying you'll like it but you'll have a whole new perspective of to like how music is built and that in and of itself i think really like i've, I've resonated probably more to music that has no lyrical content than mm -hmm. in most of the songs that do and that's because like internally you know you're making that connection with your own life based on what you're hearing like you're perceiving it so it's mm -hmm. you're not taking someone else's lyrics and making it apply to you you're making your own story in your head and i think like that that sort of perspective is something that everyone should try to like mm -hmm. gain see now, now you're just, at that point you're just adding to something that i mean i struggle to listen just to inter instrumental stuff as well just because i love the difference the vocals bring in but that definitely adds a lot more to the understanding of why people listen to just instrumentals and why they connect with it so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had the same idea with like country music. I don't like country music. I really don't want to listen to it. Oh, yeah. But there was one time I had a conversation with a friend. He's like, well, why do you like Melkor? Why do you like the unclean screams and all that stuff that you can't understand? And then I actually described it to him why. And the same thing with the emotions, like those unclean screams bring out certain emotion and the instrumentals are the exact same thing. It's you're telling a story just through the sounds, through the emotion and the lyrics are your guide through it. And then all of a sudden he was like, well, with country music, it's kind of the flip side where the literally listening to the lyrics and the instrumentals just kind of creating this whole entire like livelihood mindset that kind of they just really connect with. I'm like, OK, so it's we're all connecting with music in the exact in like we're all connecting with music in the positive way. But it's just how you connect with it is so much different than how I connect with it. That's why you like one sound music. That's why I like my style of music. So when I, it's like, you know, if I'm by friends, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to put on some country music. I'm like. 
I'm just not going to say anything because I know ever I know a lot more people connect with it than I do. But if they're going to connect with it, I'm not going to force a change on it just due to the fact that I want to change it. No, if like 10 people are enjoying it and I'm the only one that's not going to enjoy it, I'd much rather be the one person to have to tolerate than have 10 people have to tolerate what I'm trying to do. That's a lot. Yeah. But when it comes to music as well, though, I though your latest single that came out before as we were doing this interview with called Polygonal, that song, I'm not going to lie, I'm taking a look at my other one of my other screens right now. I got three pages of notes on that bad boy because when I said I dive deep into songs, I dive deep oh, yeah. right. <laughs> to really try and understand this stuff. And like I said, when it comes to these songs, the first thing I try and figure out is the meaning. So when you guys are writing this song, when it came down to like really where the inspiration was behind it in terms of its overall thought, complexity, and meaning, what did you guys mean through this song? Because not only, not going to lie, I want to see how close I came to actually figuring this out. <laughs> yeah lyrically or like i there's a lot of ways you can break that apart yeah you know? i definitely think as far as the lyrics go it's it's definitely based around sort of um coming to terms with like a toxic relationship sort of a deal because obviously i'm sure like all of us have been in some sort of toxic relationship one way or another and the storyline of the song is kind of breaking breaking down um coming to the realization that like you know yeah this is this like you're coming to the breaking point of like this is got us this is that's has to stop mm -hmm. um and like the end part where it's sort of the that like triplet kind of feature that da -ga -da -da -ga -da 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 -da, that's sort yeah. of just the, the that final like breaking point and that's sort of like the explosion of like fine actually like making some moves to end stuff um because uh the word polygonal that originally the song the track demo was called polygonal and i think that was just like a word that they that he threw on there polygonal. yeah polygonal but i looked up the word and it was um the word means like angular one like a finite number of sides and i'm like trying to think about what i can do with that word and it like as a metaphor you can throw that as to like a point of view that's you know you know one-sided you know what i mean like these not an open-minded point of view and that translates to you know toxic relationships where people aren't able to you know, perceive what the other person is feeling, open up to their, you know, to maybe that they are a problem. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of like playing a, a story through through uh, just the ending points of a toxic relationship. Interesting. Now, I got to go to Corey on this one because you, you said like you could break this down a couple of different ways. I just heard it from uh, Anthony Lyrically. What were you going to go with this? See, as I said, oh, who's, I see a door. Uh, <laughs> um because you can break it down in a lot of different ways it's kind of hard to like pinpoint an exact different way but like i know for me when uh uh i started writing the initial structure um i don't know <laughs> i like the pot the 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 combination of like a the poppy chorus but then like you have the first verse uh is like a simplified version of the uh really heavy second verse mm -hmm. and i just like that that kind of the that vibe. dynamic that, and that build i think like <laughs> at least i can say at least for like my the parts that are for this but i i i'd say pretty much for everything i i think uh that song was was probably our most like dynamic so far like mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving parts like the main riff that i do is like very noty um but it's thrown on top of a rhythm that West is doing that's different from a rhythm that George is doing. Like there's a lot um, that's kind of moving all at once. Um, but I think, I think Polly really blends together pretty well, but I, I would definitely say the whole songwriting process and the structure now is, is pretty dynamic. Well, I can kind of see, I was saying, um, well, you can kind of see like when it comes to the name with polygonal, when it comes to just like kind of you think of a polygon, you always think of like it can have as like all these different sides to it, but it's gonna have a sig there's gonna have like a number of sides to it, but that number could be any number. But just kind of using the word poly, it's not gonna be mono, so you're gonna have more than one for sure. And hearing the fact that it's like all of a sudden you have a different riff from from you, Joseph, and then all of a sudden you have a different part from Wes, you have George doing a different part, and then you have Corey in the back doing something also completely different as well. It just adds this overall feeling of multiplicity at that point. So the name really Got fits it. in there. And then when it comes to the overall meaning, like when it comes to the lyrical context, that's usually where I stick with. I when it comes to what you say, Anthony, I think I kind of had the same idea that you did, but I didn't necessarily use it as like that specific toxic relationship because I thought it was focused on how either just like someone in a toxic relationship that's close to you or like even society itself. 
pushes against you mm. overall in order to force you to be put into a box and become a person that they want you to be for the betterment of themselves, either for that person that talks relationship or for society's betterment as like, as society would deem it. The song details being a victim to that and being taken by that transformation, understanding that you are no longer the person that deep down inside you aspire to be. It creates the call to action to stand up and change that and not to get trapped in this vacuum of pressure that this has all created. I mean, yeah, no, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, you nailed it. That's, that's pretty much like the mindset I was in. Cause, um, yeah, it's, I think we all have like connections to that song. I think, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, know, I, I definitely have like connections to the song. <laughs> um, but yeah, that you knew, you nailed it. That's being kind of trapped within that toxic relationship, not being able to, uh, you know, watching yourself basically become a different person just so that you can, you know, um, like cope with whatever, uh, and then reaching your breaking point, coming and realizing that something's got to change and then actually going like, yeah, reaching your breaking point. Your description was actually like, that's how I was feeling when I wrote the song for sure. Well, again, kind of like going back to that same point where it's like where you felt with like, like when you're writing that song. I mean, again, I like even through just being on Earth for 26 years, there's a good amount of stuff I've gone through specifically in the last like five to six so it's and I've gone through something that's similar to like this, where it comes to like getting out of college, all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, the world's at your shoulders. All of a sudden, six months in, I'm just like, is this life? And it's just basically kind of living the same the life that you would that society or that is kind of expected upon you. All of a sudden, get a college, okay, get a job, and then work your way up the corporate ladder, find a find a partner, get married, have kids, buy some shit, retire, move to Florida, and die. You know, like that Cards Against Humanity card. Right. But I'm just like, it's it's like, I understand if people want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But for me, it's like being put in that box was something that I absolutely hated. And then everything else that was going on on top of that as well in my life just really deteriorated to the point where I looked in the mirror and like, let's just say like oh, September of 2017. And I hated the person that I was looking at because it was not me. And now I look in the mirror, I'm just like, I'm looking at the like me in the video screen right now. I'm just like, I know that guy. I like that <laughs> yeah, guy. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I think like once you break free of that sort of like mentality of I have to be what I what I what's expected of me, I think that's just such like a gratifying like freedom. And I think because I because I went I went through that where like once you know when, once that situation is over with and you're kind of past that that which keeps you in a box, it's sort of you know the world's sort of at your you know the world is your oyster, yeah, and you kind of get to do whatever. Don't think <laughs> the world is your oyster. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So you, I mean, it's just everything's open up to you. And then when it comes to the instrumental construction behind the song, it's just, again, you have so much different stuff going on here. But the, I think a good part, of good thing to describe it with is with how many different things you have going on here, especially with something like this kind of mean, there's so many different complexities that are going on because it's kind of taking a look at, okay, you're in this box, but first off, why did you get put in this box in the first place? Why did you succumb to this pressure, either from someone that you were in a toxic relationship with or with society or with everybody else as a whole? Was it something where you wanted to fit in? Was it something where you didn't want to stand out or something that you just kind of want to be left alone? Was it something to where you just wanted to please somebody else or that you were so distracted by something? that you had to go over and kind of like follow along with their way or like in a toxic relationship sense, you just wanted to please that person. So you're willing to change really anything about yourself in order to basically make that person happy when you completely lost yourself in the process. And the instrumentals really do kind of play off that because of how many different parts that you have because it adds so much different things going on because when the song starts out, you get that higher pitch a violin mix with like some electronic backing gives more of this creepy sinking feeling like you're going to the sunken place from Get Out. So it's like you are basically sinking into yourself to the point where the person on the outside is not you. So that's yeah. kind of, I mean, like kind of like looking it back at Get Out, like that sink that sunken place thing is kind of a great way to describe something like that because it's like this this part of you that's really you. It's still in you. It's still there. But especially when something like this happens, there's so much built up around it to the point where it can't get out. So you have to come because of how much systematically has been built up there through tax relationship study, whatever it might be. And you constantly have to work to break down that so that that little person that's stuck inside you can finally come back out and be the full person that you want. But then after that, you know, little first part of the intro, we're treated to something that has more of this metal course out with bursting drums, heavier wielding guitars. And I like the difference in the intro that leads in this heavier side of things because it feels like there's something creeping up on you to overtake you at some point. And this is that thing right here. It's the heaviness makes us happen. So it's like there's something creeping up on top of you to basically suppress the real you. And now when this heavier part hits, boom, it's wrapped you up and it ain't letting you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, absolutely. 
Um, I definitely think like you, like you said it really well. Um, the instrumental is really representative of just sort of like there's a lot happening in the music in the same way that there would be a lot happening in your head at, when you're trying to figure out like what the problem is and like what you need to do in order to fix it. And it's, the music and the lyrics are definitely like connected in a way. Uh, and I definitely I know when I wrote the lyrics, I took a lot of inspiration from like the actual structure of the, of the sound that I was hearing in the music. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I like I like probably my favorite songs we have well, right now. Well, that's yeah. kind of well. I mean, if you're gonna end up doing that, that's the way to go about it because then you're letting the instrumentals speak for themselves, and you're not trying to force a meaning on top of something that might not necessarily be there. So if you're gonna end up writing these lyrics and really trying to take emotion from them from the structure of the song itself, then when you put these lyrics and you put these vocals on top of it, everything's gonna make sense because the emotion that you're working with, you're literally taking from the song itself. So when you put it on there, you're putting it over the source material. It feels very natural if you do it that way. Like it feels what should be there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because then like what uh what what of course about the verse where all of a sudden it's like, you know, you the first verse and the second verse and the second verse kind of that first verse, but just sped up and has a lot of, ha- of a faster of your feel. Because like at the first verse, you get this deeper bass line to create more of that melodic build that also has some bursting back from the heavier guitars and double kicks from the bass drum. So it creates something heavier melodic at the same time to kind of add to that sinking feeling that then the, that the intro provides and the heavier burst of the feel of evil entering the picture as well to kind of change you. But then that second verse, again, it starts all electronic, but then really puts a heavier emphasis on the quicker burst style of it. And it gives the song a lot of life in terms of storytelling. So I can absolutely dig this with the heaviness of someone trying to change you to their idea of what they mm-hmm. want you to be. It's that heaviness and that rapidness really kind of gives a feeling of you're being wrapped up, your beat, your inner self is being consumed by someone else to change you to be what they want you to be. And at this point, it's like with how rapid it's going, it's kind of like you don't necessarily notice what's going on because you might be so focused when it's in a toxic relationship about pleasing that person and wanting to make sure that person is happy with you. Or when it comes to a societal standpoint, you just want to make sure that you're following along with the crowd and that people aren't going to, you know, make fun of you or go against you or kind of call you out because you're not doing what they expect you to do. 100%. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I just keep breaking this down because they, I can keep going, guys, because get to the chorus and you guys start out with this more of like this flowing but sinister feeling hard rock pace style riff with the high electronic piece over it. But then you also include some of this more like metalcore bursts in between and end with this metalcore style shredding outro to the chorus. And this threw me off completely when I first I'm like, how the hell is this being put in here? This is not <laughs> making any freaking sense. But the fact that there is still this sinister feel in there with the electronic overlay <laughs> saying light but haunting, like a flickering for lesser right in a hospital, is a great thing for this song to have to make this flow make sense overall. Because every time I think about like a hospital with that flickering light, it feels like there's like something coming for you, like a horror movie kind of thing. And just having that lighter kind of piece over it reminds mm. me exactly of that. So I'm thinking, holy shit. It kind of still feels like that influence is still going to be there to try and overtake you but it's like just lurking around the corner and you don't know where it's coming from but it's going to be there soon mm-hmm. <laughs> damn i didn't i didn't get that at all from, like, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I love that well, like, I, I love that that's amazing that's an amazing take on it i was just like wow it fucking sounds cool like i'll write to it i i get but, visual like ideas from uh, that inspire the way i write too uh, i i love putting a mental image and like Kind of like watching a show or a movie in my head while I'm listening to this thing. And yeah. I, I love that you have that kind of mindset too. Mm-hmm. Well, honestly, I, I absolutely love, love it. And the fact that you think that way as well, because it just adds so much more to the music and really mm-hmm. like understanding exactly where it's going. Because now all of a sudden you can mentally picture exactly where the music is trying to take you. And you get an idea of exactly where the song is leading when it comes yeah. to the instrumentals. So especially when like Anthony starts writing the lyrics for it. And when he kind of, if he's using that exact same style, then he can follow along and really create lyrics and a vocal pattern that's going to end up amplifying on top of that. But yeah, it's just that that electronic light. Again, I just keep thinking of like a flickering fluorescent light that's like kind of like on a short circuit. It's like, oh shoot, what the hell's coming around here? Because every time you see that, either it's on TV, hell, if I see that, I'm walking around a, like a dark hallway or something like that. I'm just like, okay, I feel like there's going to be someone around the corner with an ax that's just going to come <laughs> and just go, hey, Gavin! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then yell at me, try and get Dorsey and now, you fucking bastard. <laughs> Just uh, call Patrick Bateman on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. This is a good movie. 
But then even like a little bit further on, because you get to the bridge, we get this rapid, heavier burst to create more of this building feels. The electronic piece really picks up on this, only for the bridge to continue into more of this blank sounding pre-chorus to go into more of this faster burst out music before the drums even hit. And I'm like, you could have fit this breakdown in here if you really wanted to. It would have hurt to create more of this like ex- existential sinking feeling and dread feel. But building back up this out with more of this rebellion aspect to it, I think, again, this is what you guys were going for. Kind of like that, I've had enough and I have to break free of this. And this is a part to show where you're saying up for themselves. So honestly, when it comes down to it, you guys could have taken this, br- this bridge this breakdown in two completely different ways if you mm-hmm. wanted to. But it's you could have kept it as, okay, this thing is kind of wrapping you up, this this relationship or this societal pressure is wrapping you up to really suppress the inner you. And you could have gone with the way of this is going to either keep consuming you and then you're not going to be the person you want to be or the stand up and rebellion inside of it, whatever emotion you're feeling. But the way you went about it was to bring up that more standing rebellion emotion. So it's kind of cool to think that at that point in the song, you guys could have gone two completely different ways, but you guys went the way of no. We're not taking this. It's like, you know, basically twist sister. We're not going to take right. it <laughs> right at that moment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I do like songs that kind of um, like take that verse and take the like message and then kind of flip it on the, at the very end. And I feel like that was sort of like what we were trying to do is just sort of flip the perspective of like. Maybe maybe not the point of view of what of who is talking, but the idea of where it's going, you know, like you can come to terms with it and just let it consume you or you can you know rise above it and try to you know get past your breaking point and yeah. <laughs> and follow along with the queen song with i want to break free <laughs> okay i'm dropping twisted sister i'm dropping queen references man it's a good podcast you're on a roll <laughs> but we've i mean we've i've just broke down the instrumentals and the meeting with you guys so it feels like all four of you are off the hook, except for Anthony right now, because the vocals are also something that we have to talk about with Absolutely. Polygonal. So, and I'm not going to miss out and talk about the vocal. So we can start out because you get to that first verse and you come in with these like softer melodic vocals that work really well to go with that soft electronic consistent backing and contrasting against the bursting overall in the back. But then you pick up the pace to match more of those bursts in the second half to provide us more of this like scratchy, more powerful clean style as well. And this kind of feels like the most we're realizing what is happening and what has happened to us. And we're starting to show that discomfort of being someone that we're not meant to be with kind of like that slow, like what's going on here. And all of a sudden the vocals start to pick up. It's like, wait, what, what actually happened? Why is this happening? And why am I this way? So it has that feeling of just realizing that you're kind of sinking in. You're kind of in that sunken place where you're deep down, the real you is deep down inside. And this fake you that this toxic relationship or this societal pressure, or whatever it might be has created of you is looking back at you in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that it, like, um, I was also like, as far as the kind of like, the juxtaposed, like really heavy singing, compa- I'm a naturally kind of soft spoken person when it comes to uh, like, like I would resonate probably more with the beginning vocals where it's a little quieter, it's a little, um, a little bit more melodic. With those heavier burst style vocals, it was definitely me kind of trying to come out of my comfort zone and try some new stuff. Uh, Cause I had never really done that sort of like uh, dug-a-da, 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 that, that kind of a thing, but I always loved that sound. So it was, it was very much just sort of me trying to like come out of my shell, like meta, even like, like physically and like metaphorically within the lyrics of the song. Um, yeah. Just trying to go through that kind of a thing. But if you honestly think about it, it's just using that as like an actual base to this whole entire thing and kind of coming out of your comfort zone to really create something like this. Isn't that kind of the same thing of coming out of your comfort zone to not be so suppressed in terms of wanting to be accepted by society, wanting to be accepted by this person you're in a relationship with that's wanting to change you for a certain way, where it's like finally the real you is coming out and you're not having any kind of, like, what's the best way to put it? Any kind of just different ideas or any kind of reservations because you're afraid of what they might say, you're afraid of what people might think of you. You're afraid Absolutely. that the real you is going to be rejected. So it's kind of coming out of that comfort zone. This is a moment. And to actually have that be a piece for you when creating these vocals and actually doing them with this different, uh, like more raspy, unclean style. I mean, it just adds more to this whole entire, the whole entire lore that is the song in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. I think so. Because I had only been doing vocals since around March of 2020. I was originally the guitar player of this band. And, uh, and then our vocalist at the time, he had quit. And so... 
I, I sort of did the, I started to do the vocals just sort of to try it. And uh, so I didn't like, I, I didn't know what I was doing for the longest time. And this was sort of, this song was definitely my sort of, I'm, I'm kind of starting to learn like my technique and stuff. And I'm sort of applying it to that. Was, like Polygonal is definitely a really important song for me. Cause that's, you know, all the stuff going forward is net, uh, uh, like going forward from that, that song has like a new, more experienced background to it yeah. or like a more experienced way of going about it. Oh, absolutely. That experience uh, is going to paint off in the end because that yeah. was verse one. Now, verse two, honestly, verse two was a freaking trip for me. You start out with us giving this, these like these angrier whispers, like angry whisper, like unclean vocals that then go into this like death core, deep guttural vocal as we get more of the bursting sections. I'm, I looked at them like, holy fucking shit. I Whoa. love how this feels like you're coming face to face with a demon that is going to try and prevent you from being who you truly are. The heaviness throws you off completely, but it makes total sense and does not ruin the flow of the song in its entirety when you really take a look at like the understanding of the meaning because it's, you know, now you finally like have understood what's going on through the chorus, which I'll get to next. But it's like with that guttural and clean vocal, it's basically like you're basically facing your fear at that point. You're facing the thing that is keeping you down. You're facing the reason why this this you that is not you is present and the real you is so sunken deep inside you that it's struggling just to like get any kind of air. Absolutely. And when we... Uh... Cause we knew we wanted to have a feature on a track. And so when, like, just like you said, that kind of like person who's not you, who's sort of like in your head, we wanted to kind of portray that through like a different voice. And that's why when we hired, his name is Yost Cranon, uh, from his other band who did the second verse, he, he, yeah, we, he has that more death core kind of deep guttural growl. And he just put like a completely good, like amazing spin on the vocals. Like, I think it portrayed sort of that menacing voice in your head kind of a deal so well oh shit i completely forgot there was a feature on this song okay that's my yeah, yeah, okay. That wasn't you guys can roast me as, you guys can roast me for that one because i should have remembered that but um i'm gonna blame the concussions on this one because i've had eight so far in my life so there's things i yeah. remember oh, there's things wow. i forget That'll shit happens mostly because of soccer only once because of a mosh pit so <laughs> I'll probably have more because of a mosh pit probably in the next like two years because well a good mosh pit no dude I can't help it hell even when I get a, a concussion in mosh pit I'm like okay I still got to keep going it's like I'm not, I, yeah. I I paid to come here I'm not gonna stop fuck that <laughs> but now it, like in the chorus you get this more like mellow yet powerful clean vocal style that really fits more that hard rock tendency of the chorus but then the heavier unclean rapid vocals break up the entire chorus and create more of that anger and that rebellion moment on the entire track to finally take a stand against those that are trying to keep you down and not let you move forward with the life that you want. So now you're finally bringing a little bit more of that rebellion feel to it. You bring more of that stand-up feel to it. But the hard rock feel, like, again, when it came to that bridge and that breakdown there, you could have gone with something that really kind of gave more to that, like, sinking in feeling of just letting it happen instead of standing up against it. Those hard rock vocals could have created that as well. So this song kind of takes you in so many different ways because, honestly, when you're in that moment... And it's like you want to rebel against it. It's the comfort of just the comfort of repetition, just the 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 sameness of routine, and the fact that we're creatures of habit. It's really hard to break out of what has been created because you're just kind of used to it. You kind of just you know go with the flow at times. So it kind of gives like that same but different aspect to it, even within the chorus within itself. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think the burst style vocals being placed next to the chorus was definitely kind of indicative of like like. The chorus where the clean choruses that are kind of like, um, you know, kind of rock driven. That's my bread and butter. That's sort of the thing that I'm most comfortable with, you know, directly adjacent to the thing that I'm, you know, uh, that's completely foreign to me. That, 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 that yeah. those um, burst style vocals. So I, I definitely wanted to kind of demonstrate like how. Like I'm trying different stuff. I definitely think that part is the climax of the song in terms of, uh, you know, everything is gearing up to this breaking point. Here's the breaking point. And the chorus following that is sort of the, you know, after aftermath of that. Oh, absolutely. And then the bridge that this is this, this one was interesting because you start out with this higher pitch, like unclean going very rapid to create this pattern that matches with the burst. Then we get a break between the two with like a softer section that shows more of this realization when to keep fighting for yourself. And I'm not going to lie. This is what I wrote. This is all over the place, but it flows all over the place. So it's like, it, it feels like it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. 
And like when you when you when you look at it on paper, I'm like, what the actual hell? But when you listen, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think we did we did a good job when it comes to like subverting your expect so like subverting expectations. I remember when I first heard the track, uh, I was super excited to throw vocals on it because it was you know because of that it subverts your expectations and like I wanted to try to do that with the vocals as well. It ab- it absolutely does. Even with like the content of the song as well and the overall lyrical content, it's you're kind of subverting expectations at the same time as well because it, whatever whatever you're stuck in, it's the expectations from those other people is for you to follow along with what they want you to follow along. And subverting those expectations is for you to follow your true self and understand where you want to go and making sure that that happens and staying up for yourself. So yeah, kind of fun. subverting expectations really does fit exactly in with the whole entire theme of the song to basically just straight up to a point. Hell yeah. Yeah, I agree. Straight up. <laughs> and when it comes to actually going deep in these songs, I always end up kind of closing the songs out with like a little bit of like a overall kind of all encompassing thing. And I put down as I'm reading it from my note sheet, overall, the song from cold subject makes little sense. It makes a lot of sense at the same time, right? If you look at it from a completely surface level with the change between metalcore, post hardcore, hard rock, even deathcore, this song seems kind of like a mess with changing vocals that follow suit to match. It's kind of grab bag content, but understanding the meaning really gives you a look into your realization that you are not the person you want to be fighting for yourself in order to get back to that point and the guttural demon you have to destroy to become happy. It's heavy, hard, wacky all over the place, but it flows from one piece to the next without fail or any kind of bumpiness. Wow, you really have to go deep into this track to really feel the true power of it and really understand. And honestly, I'm going to put it this way. Now this is going off script. For anyone that listens to this song, if you want to listen on the surface, I totally understand it, but really listen to it, really try and get understanding with it because if you do that, this song just adds so, so so much emotional impact that you'll never have seen coming if you just take a look at it as this song goes from this influence to this influence this influence, whatever it might be no you want to actually understand why it goes that way because this song will just go from something that you might be confused by but to something that will be incredibly profound for you to listen to and pro- incredibly profound for you to understand something about yourself oh yeah oh yeah i appreciate that that's good yeah i, I like that view of it well, I did this on a podcast recently, but I'm like, well, shoot, maybe I should start writing press releases for some of these songs. Yeah, I'm like, it. Right, you, you want to know what some of these songs are like? Here we go. <laughs> Do it. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll go from I'll go from just doing podcasts to podcast slash like press releases slash Spotify bio slash mm-hmm. <laughs> you do anything, right? whatever it might be. Finally, uh, make some good as <laughs> as it was put. Kind finally make some motherfucking money. It could be like mm-hmm. butters. Finally, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but guys a- as we close out this podcast one thing i'd like to do to end it is give you guys a chance to say anything you want to say plug whatever the hell you want to plug at this given moment so all you guys from cold subject the floor is yours um yeah we uh we have a couple of shows coming up we are playing uh at we're playing some florida shows uh I'm not, yeah we're playing at West End, we're playing at, a, at the Hanau Contemporary Center. We're doing a lake rec over at the Bat Ranch, which I'm not sure when this comes out, but when it does, you know, if there's still shows in the area, we'd love to see some people there. Check yeah. our Instagram. Check our, yeah, we have Instagram. We uh, we just partnered with MVK, which is why this is possible. Get on um, Spotify. Check out Spotify. <laughs> Endorse us. <laughs> Endorse us. Give final, us some money. Final, final, final <laughs> give us money. <laughs> yeah. um, I see uh, a big ticker go across that just says, buy something. But buy something <laughs> exactly with money. We want a gift. We want a gift. It's money. <laughs> um. Yeah. And we we hope to see as many people as we can at our future shows. That's it. Yeah. Well said. All right, guys. And that means I have to end this podcast with not one, not two, but three very specific things. First things first. For everyone listening, when it comes what to cold subject, they said a lot of things right there. They've got live shows that are going to be coming up specifically in Florida. And they're going to have my, more live shows in the future. Trust me on that. You're going to want to listen to some of their music. You're going to want to listen to Valley Online. You want to listen to the brand new EP when it comes out in late 2021 or early 2022, whenever that date ends up being set. You're going to want to follow along with them on social media because, hell, that's when you're going to know when shows are coming. That's when you're going to know when you know new music is coming. That's when you know anything about the band, when you need to keep in touch with them. And you're going to want to buy something. You want to buy some buy, you buy some merch. You want to help these guys, you know, buy something. And like, there would be like Mr. Kraft and say, hello, I like money. So is your, uh, 
What, what, what was the purpose of for money? What was the, what was the purpose of you guys uh, selling merch? Money. 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 So in order to do all that, you guys are going to have to search. In order to do all that, you guys have to search up online, do all this stuff to find cold subject. But instead of actually making you guys do the search, I'm going to do the search. So look at the description of the podcast, YouTube stuff out podcast, iHeartRadio. You're going to see find cold subject online, labels, links, go follow, like, share, subscribe, stream, listen, download, buy some stuff from them. I'm making it as easy as possible on you guys. Like there is no excuse not to get in fan. All the links are going to be there. Now, number two. Number two is a promise I like to make to any band I enjoy having on the podcast. This has happened with every single MVK band. And not only that, but every single band I've had in the podcast has earned this promise. You guys, sorry to say, but you have not broken that streak. So the promise to you is this. When? This is not an if. This is not an if. No, no, no. This is a when. I can see Cold Subject perform live for the first time. My promise is this. First round's on me. All right. Uh, <laughs> with every, with every, you promise that to every band? Yeah. <laughs> if I enjoy having them on the podcast, well, I <laughs> and I enjoy having everyone on the podcast, it's my favorite thing oh, yeah. to do. So I love talking to people about music. I love talking to you guys about your music. I love getting the conversations like this. And I want to see you guys perform live because if I'm getting this deep in the music, like I want to make sure I see you, see you live. And I want to support you guys in your endeavors as well. So I'm going to see you guys play live. I'm going to make good on that promise of first rounds on me. And oh, yeah. Wonder how much vodka I'm gonna have to get one. So uh <laughs> yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no vodka. Probably, probably before the show. <laughs> All right, then we're doing absinthe. I got this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've actually never had absinthe. I can't afford it. <laughs> I'll t- I'll have to find some way to afford it. But on that note, guys, I cannot in all good conscience end this podcast with goodbye because a couple of reasons. One, made that promise. Two, I'd love to have you guys back on the podcast again at some point. And three, well, this is too much fun. So I don't want to say goodbye because that's way, way, way too final. That feels like it's the end of this. So not doing it. It's not, it up. not doing it. So I'm going to end it with how I always end this stuff. See you later. See you later. <laughs> well, well, folks, this is my interview with the guys, the man, Cold Subject. Again, I want to thank all those guys. I want to thank George, Joe, Corey, West, and Anthony for being on the podcast. Can't wait to have you guys back on once again. When it comes to making sure that you guys follow along with everything for Cold Subject so you know when live shows are being played by them, when they're releasing new music, especially that brand new EP that's going to come out later in 2021 or early in 2022. When it comes to buying stuff from them, again, links in the description of the podcast for every single thing that you need under Find Cold Subject Online. Remember to follow MSOG Rocks and the Corporate Crush Podcast Online as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Five Out Podcast, iHeartRadio, because that helps us out so much. Make sure you just listen to every single one if you can. And um, tell a friend, share it wherever you possibly can. Share it with your fa- fa- uh friends share it with your fans if you've got more of a social media following share it with your family share it with anyone that likes rock and metal music because it'll help us out tremendously and i want to thank that so thank you for listening thank you for supporting thank you phoenix fitness remember 15 percent off at fnxfit.com use the code msotd at check on that note that's gonna be for me guys thank you very much for listening to the code progression podcast brought to you by msotd rocks where rock and metal thrive my name is kevin and you guys know how i end every single one of the big healthy and Party.